All right, this addition problem. I'm not going to ask you one maybe this uh, complicated here on test day. Um, test day, your problem is going to look more like this, more like what you see right here. Uh, to, so to put it as simply as I can, uh, I'm going to give you a problem where the common denominator is already put in place. All you have to do is just simply add them up. And when you add fractions, just like if I were to ask you to add one-fifth plus two-fifths, you wouldn't do anything with the denominator. It still stays as five and just add the one and the two up and write it as three. Same concept here. Just simply add the like terms that you have up on top. So x plus negative 7x would give you negative 6x. And then uh, 6 plus negative 64. Uh, wouldn't that be negative 58? Then down below, just copy down your common denominator. x squared minus x minus 20. All right, 23. Multiply. Multiplying fractions was nice, right? When we look at a similar, uh, simpler problem, like 2 sevenths times 3 fourths, you don't even need a common denominator. And when we multiplied fractions, it was always top times top and bottom times bottom. So in this case, we have 6 over 28. And occasionally, these fractions can be reduced. If you divide both those by 2, now you're at 3 over 14. So let's do the same thing with the, uh, the problem up above. So let's get this out of the way here. It's just stuff that we don't really need to be dealing with there. Give us some more room. So to multiply these together, top times top. It's this right here. And just take it one number and one variable at a time. Just start with the 12, multiply it by the 10. Gives you 120. Next, take the x to the third, multiply it by that x squared, got to add the powers up when you multiply, so that's going to be x to the fifth. Next, look at your y's. Look at your y's. We have y to the fourth, y squared, y to the sixth. Adding those up. Finally, looking at the end right there, um, z stands alone. Aww. Down below, bottom times bottom here. Five times three, that's going to give you a 15. Now, notice x is absent here down below. So what I would do is skip over z, go to the y squared, and even I'd make a space right here and write down the y. I know it doesn't look right mathematically, but trust me, lining up our like terms is going to be a lifesaver here when we start to finish our answer. So here's us multiplying them together. So now let's worry about reducing the fraction. How many times is 15 going to go into 120? I know 15 goes into 60 four times, and since 120 is double 60, Let's take that four times that it would go into 60 and then double that. So it should be 8. So 120 over 15 should be 8 over 1. So I'm going to keep the 8 on top. You know you need to bother writing the 1 down below. X to the 5th, nothing to cancel with. So it stays up there. Y to the 6th, Y squared. Battle of the Y's here. Who has more Y's? The top has more Y's. Well, how many more Y's does it have? Four. You've just successfully canceled. And then Z's cancel out. So there's no reason to write that. Speaking of no reason to write... We don't need a fraction bar here, do we? So right there is our final answer. Okay, the graphing side of things here. If this is a multiple choice test, which it is, uh, really it's going to boil down to whether or not you can just graph this in the graphing calculator correctly. What I would do here, they don't put parentheses in here, but when you type in your graphing calculator, it's absolutely critical that you put two sets of parentheses around those and then when you divide, make sure you put your division symbol in between. Observe. So from here, hit your Y equals button, clear out anything that's there, and proceed to type in the numerator with parentheses. X squared plus 5X plus 4. Then close the parentheses. So now we want to divide by X plus 2. So hit your division symbol. And let's type in x. X was minus 2, wasn't it? X minus, oops, I'm forgetting the parentheses, right? X minus 2. Close it. Graph it. So our function has this little curve right down there. Okay, so look for that one. Actually, if we, let's zoom out here a little bit on it. Ah, we're going to want something that looks like that. Ah, so like I said, you're going to want one that looks like that. If we go down even further here and break this down a little bit, remember, they wanted to know where the zeros and the vertical asymptotes are at. Vertical asymptotes easy. 
always look to the denominator to find a vertical asymptote. So vertical asymptote would be right here, and what, how we go about finding it is thinking about the value of x that would make the function undefined. Remember, we can't divide by a number like zero. In fact, we can't divide by a number exactly zero. So two would make that denominator zero. So we have an asymptote right there at two. I mean, we gotta remember why those graphs look like curves there is because they are getting to an asymptote and not crossing over it. The zeros can be found in the numerator. You have to take that numerator, we gotta factor it. Two numbers that multiply to give you four, add up to give you five. That'd be x plus four times x plus one. Go ahead and look at the opposite game right there. So you have a zero at negative four and a zero at po uh, negative one. So negative four, negative one. That's what you're seeing right here, really close together. Negative four, negative one. So now we got that branch doing its thing right there. And remember not to cross over the asymptote. And we got the other branch doing its thing right here, curving back up and exiting stage right. Next problem shifts from asymptotes in the graph to holes in the graph. Same place, the same place where you look to find a vertical asymptote, same place where you find the hole. Hole in the graph right here, uh, undefined value here, x cannot be negative 4. So the hole here is at x equals negative 4. Graph it. How about graphing calculator? Clear out your old function, or keep it and type over the top. But you got to use parentheses. And wasn't it x squared minus x minus 20? Now divide, parentheses, is it x minus 4? Let's double check here. Yep. Oh, wait, it was x plus 4. So I'm going to go back here, type over the top. Always a good idea to check your equation after you type it in to make sure you're actually telling the calculator to do what you want it to do. Now we graph it. Wait a minute, something's up here. Ah, I see the problem here. That was supposed to be a minus 20. I don't think I have that. Yep, I got plus 20 here, so let's go back and change that. That should be a minus 20. See, once again, always a good idea to check, make sure what you typed is exactly what was on the paper. That's better. Remember, we were zoomed in here, so I'm going to hit the zoom button, standardize it so we get something that looks a little bit better. Now, remember, the hole here was at negative 4. 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. No, 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 no. Right down there is where the hole should be at. So we want to duplicate that when we make our graph. You know, a table of values can't hurt in terms of getting points down to make the graph look right. Notice if we go back up there, there's where the error was. So plotting these points out here, we have a point 0, negative 5, negative 1, negative 6, negative 2, negative 7, negative 3, negative 8, and then right here at negative 4 where it should have been negative 9, there's the hole in the graph. Notice the slope is just 1. We're going up 1 to the right 1, remembering the graph's counting by 2's. So there's our graph with the hole in it. Next, trying to solve these equations here, what you're going to have to do is a process called clearing the fractions. Clearing the fractions requires us to take each one of those three terms you see here, one, two, three things right there, and multiply every single one of those by x. So x times x gives us x squared minus 2 times x, copy down your equal sign, and because this is x, it's really x over 1, cancels out those, and we got 24. Next move, set it equal to 0. Since this is a quadratic where we have a squared term and a linear term, we can only solve this if we subtract 24 from both sides and set it equal to zero. What happens next? You know what to do. Time to factor. So now we have x and then x there. Two numbers that multiply to give you negative 24 and add together to give you negative 2. I think we have to start ahead by 4 and then lose 6. Yeah, that's it. And so then 
we play the opposite game to find our solutions here. Negative 4, positive 6. One other thing to consider here on this test, this multiple choice, you're going to see negative 4 and 6 as a, as a possible answer. What you could do is if uh, factoring, or sorry, clearing the fractions escapes us here, couldn't we just take the answer choices and plug them in and see if we get it, the both sides to be equal? Notice if you put a negative 4 in here, negative 4 minus 2, that gives us negative 6. On the other side, 24 divided by a negative 4, that gives us negative 6. Checks out, so that's why that's the right answer. We can do the same thing with, with the 6 here. You can take 6, plug it in there, plug it in there, and do that math. So 6 minus 2, that's 4. 24 divided by 6, that's 4. Checks out. Works for both. This problem, similar situation over here. Watch this. If I told, if I told you that x over 7 equals um, 9 over 7, it's pretty obvious what x needs to be, right? In order for these two things to even be equal, shouldn't x have to be equal to 9? Why do we have to know that x has to be equal to 9? It's because of the fact that the denominator is the same. So when those denominators are the same, what must be absolutely true is that 5x must be equal to 3x minus, uh, plus 10. So we set that up and we solve it. We have variables on both sides of the equal sign, so we have to subtract to get them on the same side. So then 2x equals 10. Dividing both sides by 2, or just common sense, 2 times 5 gives us 10. Whoa, -oh, what was the problem here? 5, when we take that 5 and plug it in here, realize we make that denominator a 0. So guess what? The only answer that we had here doesn't work, so there is no solution to this problem. Finally, number 28, graphing calculator is the name of the game here. So let's go ahead and type it in. Clear out the old one. We have x to the fourth. Jump down there. I think it was minus 8x uh, squared. Square button's right there. Uh, the next we have plus 1. Graphosaurus rex. There we go. Look at that. Uh, and what they want you to do here with this is describe what happens to this graph as you move from left to right. You move from left to right, the graph decreases, eventually turns, increases, decreases, and increases. Okay? So decreases, increases, decreases, and increases. Changing directions one, two, three times. Number of real zeros, that's where the graph crosses the x-axis. One, two, oh, I think it's four. Let's go back to the graph on the calculator. If you aren't quite sure if it's one or two right there, hit the zoom button and zoom in on it. Right there in the middle, see that flashing right there? Hit enter. Ah, there we go. Zoomed in on it, we see there's once right there and twice right there. So it actually was four times here. So on this problem it crossed the x-axis four times, so there's four zeros.